So this is The Woman in the Window. It's the new Netflix movie starring A.B. Adams. Um, I'll say how I feel about it in a second, but it's directed by Joe Wright. Uh, so Amy Adams, uh, she plays Anna Fox, and she's agoraphobic. She was, well, she's a psychologist or psychiatrist, and she, um, she worked with kids at one point, but there's something that happened, and as a result, she's now agoraphobic and she never leaves the house. She spies on her neighbors. It's almost like a like Rear Window, uh, the Hitchcock movie. You know, she spies on her neighbors and stuff like that. She always knows what's going on with them. Um, so across the street from her lives the Russells, and um, Alistair Russell is played by Gary Oldman. That's the the father in this. The son, uh, Ethan Russell, that's played by Fred Hackinger. I don't know how to say his name, but the son, uh, Ethan. He comes over to uh, Anna's house um, and he's distressed and things like that. And so she suspects that um, Gary Oldman's character, the father, is actually abusive to him. And then later on, uh, Julianne Moore plays uh, Jane Russell. She comes over to talk to her and she like vents to her and they drink wine. And so they kind of get close and she still suspects that something's going on. So she's standing at her window, she looks across the street and she sees Jane Russell be killed with a knife. She sees that murder and now she's telling, she tells her tenant, she tells the other detectives and stuff like that about it. But then uh, Jane Russell walks in and she says she's never even met her um, and it's somebody else. So now she's trying to, you know, you know it's, it's a question of whether it's just in her head or not because she is like out of her mind and she is also on medication that she's not supposed to take with alcohol but she's still drinking wine. Uh, she talks on the phone every day to her um, her husband that she separated from and her daughter and that comes into some things later on but that's pretty much the story here is to see whether that you know to see what's really going on she kind of does look investigations and stuff into Gary Oldman's character uh, to find out um, where that lady that she met I guess went to where the real wife is this is <laughs> this is bad but positives uh, uh, Amy Adams, she's really good, right? She really carries this movie. You know, I I don't know why she's doing these movies with Netflix because first that hillbilly bullshit and then now this, but she's really good. You know, she really uh, gets into this character's mental state and all the different things that happen, different visions she's having and things like that. Amy Adams is great at that, um, being agoraphobic, even though it's kind of ridiculous in certain scenes. Um, you know, she really, I think she really captures that for the character. Uh, not only her, Gary Oldman, you know, the material's not that good and he doesn't do much, but he's good in the movie too. Uh, you know, pretty much everybody other than a select few, um, they, they, their acting is well done. Julianne Moore, uh, she's actually not very good and her character uh, is kind of ridiculous, but that's the material and the direction. And then the son, uh, Ethan Russell, uh, Fred Heikinger. He is not good at all. Um, I was trying to figure out what was going on with that, like if he's on the spectrum or something, but they don't really say, so I don't know if that's, I don't know what was going on with that, but his performance just wasn't working for me. But still on positives, <laughs> uh, the cinematography is well done. I think, you know, there's some really good shots of the uh, house to make it almost seem bigger than it actually is, almost like it's like a huge mansion when it's really not, it's just a New York house. And, you know, there's some other things that, that go on with showing different things that she's seeing, that only she's seeing. And I think that there are some really interesting shots in this. I think I, it's actually, for the most part, you know, from a technical aspect, well done. If only the script was better. <laughs> it, it, it is interesting for a little while. Like, it is kind of intriguing to figure out, whoa, what's really going on here? And she's kind of doing her investigations and, you know, checking into things. Um, into Gary Oldman's character, uh, Mr. Russell. But it still kind of falls flat and it's still kind of slow. We can get to negatives now. So this movie is pretty ridiculous. I mean, you, you spend most of it with her just kind of walking around the, the you know, the, uh, her house. You know, she's, there's this weird thing where she's always, I mean, I know she's supposed to be kind of scared or whatever, but she's agoraphobic, she's in her house. And she's always getting jump scared for some reason, especially when it comes to the White, uh, White Russell's character, her tenant. There's a point where he walks in and for some reason, real quiet, <laughs> and he's just kind of standing there. She turns around as another jump scare. That felt unnecessary. A lot of these are. He knows she's, 
you know, agoraphobic and all that, and she's going through things, but he like scares her when he goes to look, in, <laughs> look at her roof. It's, it's, that's the smaller stuff. There's also a car accident in this, right? And I've seen this, I saw this twice in one movie just a couple months ago with Zack Snyder's nonsense, where a character gets into a car accident when they're barely looking at the road, well, when they're blatantly not looking at the road. You know, it's like these writers don't realize that, you know, people do get in accidents when they're still, you know, paying attention and driving responsibly. A character drops their phone behind them in the back seat reaches down for it, looks down while they're driving at night in the snow. It is ridiculous. It's awful. That's, that's the point where the movie starts to really go down for me. But if we're talking about the real issue here, it's the ending and the reveal. It is so fucking bad. It is, it is monumentally bad. Like, I can't imagine this movie is getting good reviews just from this. This is epically bad. So, a character turns out to be first of all there's no real there's no real lead into this character being the person that's that that's behind this there's no real lead in for it it just kind of happens doesn't really make much sense they don't really try to make it make sense this is based on a book so i'm guessing they're just following the book but they could have wrote it in a better way than this and the character comes in and just chews the scenery up i mean this 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 actor is not good all right and this is the worst of it the worst acting in the movie, easily. But it also has this insane final confrontation that I was laughing the entire time during the whole thing. I mean, it was it was just so funny to me. I could not believe that it was just this insane, like, you know, somebody gets stabbed in their cheek and all this other. It is crazy. It really is crazy, especially after coming off of that just awful uh, reveal. You're supposed to leave little breadcrumbs. You're supposed to make it make sense. It feels like they just went, uh, all right, you did it. You know, it was, it was, it's, it's bad. I'm telling you, you, maybe people caught on to it beforehand. I didn't, and I was paying attention. I was trying to figure out, you know, who, who might be doing this or what might be really going on. And I couldn't see it coming because it feels like it's out of left field for me. Like I said, it, for the most part, is well acted. Amy Adams, you got to stop doing these movies with Netflix, clearly because they are like, trying to like systematically destroy your your acting career but, but she's great she really carries this movie on her shoulders really and the other you know most of the other actors are good too uh, and obviously I said it's a well-made movie they definitely put time and effort and money into this but uh, it's it's just the car accident thing which I won't I won't spoil the details and then the the ending reveal I'm telling you right now you have to see this. I don't, I don't usually do this. I'm giving it out of trash, by the way. It was a rental, and then around the time where the, you know, the, with the ending was so bad, I, I have to hold myself back from even giving it lower than trash, even giving it my lowest rating. But, because this feels like the worst movie of the year, just from the ending alone. But I, I, I'm telling you, you have to see this for yourself. It is so ridiculous. I was, I was legitimately laughing the whole time. But regardless, that is the woman in the window. I'm giving it utter trash. The ending is something that needs to be seen to be believed. And that's it. Subscribe to the channel, all that other stuff, and we're done.